Hey, hey, Tony got here popping in. Now, listen to me. Something I was thinking about here, and this this comes up a lot of times on my coaching sessions. One thing that I notice, and I try to tell y'all this all the time, and I feel like, honestly, I feel like men better at this than women, not to put one gender against the other, but to make a comparison between the two genders, one of the things I notice is that with men, you notice when you hear a podcast and what podcasts and all this stuff be talking about women, do you notice that men actually believe it? Like when men hear something about a woman, a man believe it. So if a narrative goes out that women cheat more than men, men going to believe it. If a narrative goes out that most women is gold diggers, men going to believe it. Men believe what they hear about women. But one of the things I found is that women don't really believe what they hear about men. Meaning, I could tell a woman that a man will wait for sex until marriage. And a woman will not believe that. Just because the man tried her, just because it ain't go the way she wanted it to go, she won't believe it. And from that right there, it just showed me. And I try to give the game, but most women do not listen. And I'm here to tell you that you have to study. You got to study. You got to study people. You got to study relationships. You got to study the opposite sex and you got to take notes. Study and take notes because what I am finding is that most women, most women know very little about men and rightfully so. One of the reasons is because men have a man law, man code where men don't talk much. Men don't express too much. So a lot of, in a lot of cases, a man is not telling his daughter the truth about a man because he doesn't want her to look at him differently. So he can't tell his daughter. Then when a woman gets out beyond her father, any other man she meets that she's not kin to, he can't tell her the truth about men because then that will block what he's trying to do. So what does it look like for a man to come up to a woman and say, hey, I'm looking at you like this and this is what I'm reading about you and this is how I'm judging you. A man is not going to say that because then a woman is going to do the opposite of what he says is going to make him judge her. She going to play a role. So he's not going to tell her. So a man is going to ask a woman for things. He's going to pretend he wants things. He's going to pretend he expects things. And he's doing this to see what the woman wants, what the woman will do. And the reason why he's doing this is because what he's saying is, is, hey, if she does this, it means this. And the woman is looking at it like, well, that's not fair because he asked me to do that. Just because somebody asked you to do it don't mean that they want you to do it. Oh, well, that don't make no sense. What you think an undercover cop is? That ain't fair. It don't seem fair. Like, how are you coming up to me and offering to sell me some drugs or offering to buy some drugs, but you the law. How you finna get me in trouble when you done came and tempted me? When you done came and set me up, how you finna get me in trouble for that? It ain't like you just randomly found me. You came and set me up. How you finna get me in trouble when you got my phone tapped? Don't seem fair, but that's life. Life ain't fair. So a man could pressure a woman for sex, could pressure a woman to go to her place or her come to his place, that don't mean that's what he want. But that's what he's going to get data from. 
because the woman has a choice. The woman could choose to say, no, I'm not ready to have sex. The woman could choose to say, no, I'm not going on out of town with you. I don't know you that well. The woman could choose to say, no, you're not coming over to my place. No, I'm not coming over to your place. No, you can't touch my vagina. No, you can't touch my booty. No, you can't touch my bre breast. No, I'm not giving you oral. No, I'm not doing that. I don't know you. We getting to know each other. It is too early. A woman has that right. But when you don't do it, the man get to take and judge and say, oh, oh, you thotty. Oh, she loose. Oh, she forward. Oh, she old flagrant follow. And then get to see the difference. So this is what you got to realize and understand. Got to realize and understand. Got to pay attention and get the knowledge, get the lesson, and make sure that you're learning. Make sure that you're paying attention. And if a man, if you hear from a man who doesn't have an iron in the fire, meaning your brother, your daddy, even if you got a gay homeboy, that gay homeboy understand men too. And I know it's a lot of women that got a gay homeboy. If a man ain't got no iron in the fire, I'm not talking about your male friend who used to like you or done tried to hit on you or might like you. His advice might be skewed. Even though it, it may be to protect you because he wants you. But especially if you hear from a man who ain't got no iron in the fire, you need to listen. You need to listen. If a man telling you about men, you need to listen. Because sometimes that small little choice that you want to make could have grave consequences. Letting that man come over to your place and you don't really know that man yet could cost you your life could lead you into a life of torment because he is a stalker having sex with that man before marriage could cost you uh, being a single mother could make you a single mom and you dealing with a deadbeat because you didn't know him so you got to pay attention and you got to listen and protect yourself Prepare yourself, protect yourself, and do what you know is right. Do what you know you're supposed to be doing because you're going to get tested. That is life. It's not fair, but it's life. You're going to get tested. That man going to try you to see how much of H.O. you got in you. Going to try you to see how gullible you are, how naive you are, how willing to bend you are. He is going to try you. So understand that, know right from wrong, stand your guard, but understand that standing your guard don't mean you got to be a guard dog. You can stand your guard without barking, without yelling, cussing, snapping, being rude, being nasty. You can say no with a smile, point blank period. You can say no with a smile. So, hey, listen to me now. And I'm going to try to every now and then, when I think about them, give you a little video, giving you the game, help you understand something, touching on different aspects, different parts of this. So listen to me now, and you can take this to the bank. Because I ain't going to tell you nothing lie. I ain't going to tell you nothing wrong now. But it's a lot better that we could be doing in these relationships if women will just listen. Stop thinking you know it all like Eve in the garden. Thought she knew everything and then got us in this doggone debauchery. And, oh, well, Adam should have told her no. Adam should have listened to God. Listen, man. When a woman put that thing on a man, man, we don't be hearing nothing. We, we don't be thinking straight. Adam had probably just climbed out of there. And Adam was like, man, that felt good. I want me some more of that in a little bit. So when she come up there, 
with that fruit and yes we say apple we know that we don't know if it was an apple some folks be arguing late in comment where does it say apple man you meant that ain't the point so shut up we know that it might not have been an apple my goodness we be arguing about anything could have could have been a thumb quad could have been a date we don't know but one thing I do know is Adam probably like, that's what happy wife, happy life started at right there. And so listen, the woman have all the power. The woman got all the influence. And I'm going to tell you as a married man, this month, March 30th, May, 17 years of marriage. I'm going to tell you, it's hard. It's still hard. It is still hard as a man to speak your mind. And to stand on what God told you to stand on. Because if your woman don't like it. You're not sleeping with God. So that look. When you get horny. You don't turn to the Lord. You turn to your woman. If you done got, your, got on your woman nerves. With your little raggedy opinion. With your little raggedy idea. You standing on business. And your woman in her feelings, in the hurt of feelings, or she upset because she ain't getting no way, that'll turn a woman off. And a woman don't want to come off nothing. So that's why a lot of men, that's why women got so much power, so much influence, is because a man trying to adapt to the woman to get what he want to get. And women don't understand how much power they do. And then the women who do understand, they misuse it. They misuse it. And misuse it and abuse it. So that's why you see, that's why women be like, HOs be winning. It's because they understand their power and they use it to their advantage. When you can understand your power, your influence, and use it purely to your advantage through your protection of yourself, it'll benefit you by knowing who you are, knowing whose you are, and standing on that. Instead of feeling like you got to bend over backwards and worship a man and let a man come and do whatever he want to do and feeling like you owe him something. When he trying to court you, he trying to get to know you, he got to come to you. You don't have to bend over backwards for him. It is of the essence that a man works for a woman's heart. Point blank, period. Hey, this is Tony Gaskins. God bless you. Need to go on here and put my little light on the charger. My wife bought me the hill light because I be sitting in the dark. She bought me the hill light. God bless you. We'll talk soon.